Y'all, I don't know about you, but I feel like in today's society, I have more trust issues for people that I don't know than I ever have before in my entire life. Maybe it's just a byproduct of getting older, or maybe our society is just degrading. We're not going to learn about that today. But what we are going to learn about and what I really want to share with you are three stories that have to do with trust issues. And the first one has to do with a major social media platform that is uh, messing with their verification system. It's been affecting influencers and celebrities and beauty brands, and some of them are weighing in on how unsafe they feel. I also want to let you know some information about the brand Morphe. Their parent company had filed for bankruptcy, and they've now been acquired by their lenders, but there's a big red flag happening for me in the court documents that dropped this past week that I want to share with you in case you were planning on buying anything from Morphe in the future. Or in case you're like me, you're not planning on buying anything from Morphe, but you're just freaking nosy. That's that's where I'm at. <laughs> and then in the third story that is the trifecta of trust issues that we are talking about today, uh, you know, when you buy a product, you see the claims on the package when you buy a beauty product, and it says, you know, all these things it can do, but how do you really know that the ingredients are backing up what the brand says that it can do? There's no regulations that are making sure the brands can back up their claims through the actual performance of the product. Well, there is a new free resource that we have to easily find out in science-based information whether the ingredients that are in your beauty products may do what they say they're going to do. And I'm going to share that website with you. I have so much more to share with you along with all of those stories. So hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the beauty space right now, all in one place. And I know for this first story that you are on YouTube, and this is the social platform of your choice right now. And we don't all use all of the social platforms that are out there. There are a lot of them. They're time consuming. We all have our preferences. So you may not all be on Twitter and seeing what is happening over there right now with verification. I will admit, as a Twitter user, that Twitter has always been a cesspool of negativity, but for me, it has also been a great way for me to connect with other creators, connect with people that watch my videos. Like every social media platform, it has its positives and its negatives, and for me, the positives have far outweighed the negative, believe it or not, and that's why it's my second favorite social media platform after YouTube. But if you are not on Twitter, I can say that we can probably reach a general consensus, those of us that are on Twitter, that things are quite different than they used to be before Elon Musk, billionaire dude who owns Tesla and SpaceX and all that stuff, before dude took it over. He has been imposing a lot of his ideas on the platform and some people like them, some people do not like them. And one of the things he said he was going to do was he was going to take away what they called legacy verification. And basically what that means is if you are a, what they call a notable person, you know, you're a celebrity, you're a beauty brand, maybe you're an influencer with a large following, you have a little check mark next to your name that basically just tells everybody that you're you and they verified that you are you. On YouTube, that verification mark really helps me, especially with people trying to scam, saying that you've won a giveaway. When they use my profile picture and they make up some weird name, they say that they're me and they're not me. But you know, because it doesn't have the little check mark next to it, that it's not me and they're just a scammer trying to get money from you. And it's the same kind of thing on every social media platform, I believe they all have some kind of verification system. So what I think it comes down to with removing these check marks from people is that Twitter doesn't make a lot of money and Elon Musk wants to make more money. So therefore he wants people to pay for their verification marks. Not that long ago, Elon followed through on his promise and he pulled all of the legacy check marks from any account that didn't pay the $8 a month. Now there are many reasons why people really Really do not want to pay that $8 a month. And it really, for a lot of people, doesn't have to do with how much it costs. It's not about the cost. It's the principle behind it. But we could go into a whole nother video about that. And that's not what I want to focus on today. Point is that many people who need their name verified, people know that that's who they are, like brands, influencers, celebrities, Muppets, 
everybody's been stripped unless you pay that $8 a month. What it comes down to is at this point, we just don't know anymore who is legit and who isn't on that platform. Patrick Starr, who is a longtime beauty influencer, he is the founder of One Size that sold at Sephora. He tweeted, quote, so this is what it feels like to be unverified. And then joining regular Twitter after I got my blue check mark taken away, to which someone responded, welcome back to economy. They serve peanuts here. <laughs> Snitchery, who has been in the beauty space forever, tweeted, my blue check is gone, who wants to see feet? And Ashley Strong, who was the winner of James Charles's Instant Influencer, she tweeted, Elon, hurry up and take this blue check. I don't need nobody thinking I'm paying for Twitter. And then followed up eight days later with OMFG. He re... <laughs> <laughs> and then showing that her blue check mark was gone. Elon has admitted that he has paid for some celebrities to keep their check marks, but there's no way to know who Elon is paying for and who's paying for it for themselves because no matter who you are, it says that you've paid and that you've been verified through your phone number. If you look into the beauty space, Manny MUA has his check mark, Laura Lee does not. Tati Westbrook has hers, but Huda Beauty has lost hers. According to an article in Glossy, Manny actually admitted to paying for Twitter Blue as he wanted to keep that two-step security sign-in function via SMS because this was removed from anybody that didn't pay for Twitter Blue. In a now-deleted tweet, Manny said, Twitter is so whack for this blue check sh Take my check, I don't care, just keep my account secure. When they said no two-step verification for account login, I said, guess I'm getting Twitter blue. As for brands, the New York Times said there's actually a different system for brands, that Twitter has introduced a paid system that charges $1,000 a month for brands to have a gold check mark showing their verification that it's a real brand. Twitter's top 500 advertisers and the top 10,000 most followed brand accounts on Twitter can reportedly keep their gold checks for free, but this has knocked out a lot of beauty brands. That includes celebrity brands like Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez, House Labs by Lady Gaga, REM Beauty by Ariana Grande, and Give by Gwen Stefani. They all are now unverified accounts. The reason why I am bringing this up in What's Up In Makeup is because it freaks me out because I feel like there are going to be people, what they call bad actors, who may create accounts that are pretending to be these brands and then buy a bunch of fake followers, make it look like they're the real brand, and then start scamming scamming people. Or they may not even buy fake followers, they may just start trying to scam people off the jump. So for now, for me, I know that I can trust the brands that I already follow over there, but as far as brands that I haven't followed up to this point, I'm just not really trusting anything that they say that ends up being tweeted out because how do I know that that's really the real account? Especially when it comes to giving any personal or private information. I just wanted to put it out there just as something to consider to please be safe out there on the the internet, especially at Twitter right now. If you are a current or future Morphe customer, this story is mostly for you. But if you've also been following the Morphe Forma Jaclyn Cosmetics bankruptcy story, this is an update on the oxygen development story. Now, if you remember, oxygen development is the lab that was confirmed that produced Jaclyn Hill's hairy lipsticks. The ones that everybody, well, supposedly everybody, I know I got my refund, but most people seem to have gotten their refunds. And then Jaclyn and said she was all out of all this money and she paid all this money and she's out all this money because she had to give everybody refunds. And then we learned that Oxygen Development was never even paid for the lipsticks and all she did was just give the money back that had been paid to her. So it was like, Meh. One of the stories that we talked about was that there was an informal statement from Jaclyn Hill that went into court documents. There was also a formal statement by Oxygen about the money that they were owed. And then they had pulled out of the next court hearing and we were all like, wah, wah, wah. We were totally totally bummed about it. The piece that I'm assuming Jacqueline was going to talk about during that part of the court hearing, we talked about that last week. Now we're hearing the piece about oxygen and it has to do with an order that was never fulfilled. Now the language seems to be intentionally left pretty vague. So my non-lawyer self is going to try to connect the dots correctly, but I am not making any guarantees because I do not have formal training in this area. This is how the story goes. So Morphe 
and Jaclyn Cosmetics had both worked at one point with Oxygen Development. And when they filed for bankruptcy, there was an open contract. And when the buyers bought both of the companies, they were like, nope, contract rejection. We don't want this. We don't want any part of this. But the problem was is that there was something that was open, that Morphe had paid a deposit, but then Oxygen never fulfilled on it. And Oxygen seems to have wanted to fulfill that order. It was about $200,000 worth of product. But the new buyers are like, dude, we have nothing to do with this. Like anything you bought is technically ours because we just bought you. And you know, if you, these products are incoming, you're responsible for paying for them. And then we are going to keep the products and sell them. That's what it seems like is happening. I'll put the statements on the screen right now in case there's any legit lawyers out there that think that I've got this wrong. Please let me know because I definitely want to give you correct information. But it seems like the new owners don't want to take responsibility for this deal. And now they're calling Morphe LLC old Morphe. LLC, and they are going to be responsible for this debt. The court has ordered Oxygen to use that $28,000 that Morphe already paid them to start working on the products, and they have 30 days to get those products in the hands of the new owners of the company. So it seems like these products that are coming in are going to go out for sale to customers, and that's where I want to put in my warning, because we already know the history of oxygen development. We have seen evidence presented over the years of animal hair and other objects being found in these lipsticks that were rush shipped through this lab. We also know that Morphe continued to work with them even knowing they had a dirty ass lab. And now we know that the new buyers are now taking on this product, this $200,000 worth of product and potentially selling it to customers in the future. So we don't know what products are coming out of oxygen development and which ones are coming out of other labs because they did work with multiple labs. So that's where I wanted you to know about it in case you're ordering from Morphe in the future. Uh, yeah, some of it might be coming from oxygen labs. And if that sketches you out, you may want to wait a little while before you order from the company. Just saying, that's what I would do if I was ever going to be a Morphe customer ever again, which I'm probably not. And as far as oxygen being paid for those hairy ass lipsticks, it doesn't look like they're going to be paid. It looks like that is all getting flushed with the rest of the debt, which honestly good. <laughs> I feel like Oxygen shouldn't have been paid for the terrible job that they did. There is no reason why that should have happened. If they felt like rushing the products through that fast through the development process would compromise the quality and integrity of the products, they should have said no instead of taking the money. And they took the money and they put out dirty product. We also know that Marlena Stell had had problems with this lab with products coming in that were not okay to sell. So this is not the only time that Oxygen had this problem and they may have this problem in the future. And that's really why I wanted to put this in the show. So warning put out, now you know, and now we will move on to the next story. Y'all know I'm an ingredient geek. You know, I've been into learning about cosmetic ingredients for many, many years, like six or seven years at this point, way before they were really touted in the media and on packaging and before brands were using them for advertising. So whenever there's new technology and new ways for customers to know what is in their beauty products, I am all for it as long this is the disclaimer, as long as it is based in science and not fear mongering. One of my favorite resources for cosmetic ingredients has always been Paula Bagone's Polish Choice Ingredient Library. Yes, Polish Choice is a brand that sells products, but they sell fabulous products. I'll just say that there. They have sent me PR in the past, but I was buying their stuff way before they started sending me PR. Paula Bagone is legendary in this industry as far as skincare and she puts out information that is truly based in science. She always has the articles listed, the scientific research articles to back up her claims. And now she has expanded the ingredient library to something completely magical. According to their website, the cited research is from a broad range of fields, including anatomy, physiology, dermatology, cosmetic chemistry, genetics, environmental science, and safety to make sure that they aren't fear mongering like a lot of websites do. 
do when they use EWG as a source because for the longest time all we had was EWG. There were no other sources and now like I'm so glad more like science-based websites are becoming available to the average consumer. I'm gonna put on the screen a little tour for you of how this works and you can access this right now for free. So there's two ways that you can get ingredients into her database. You can upload a photo of the back of your box or you can copy and paste ingredients from a website. So what I did is I just went over to Sephora and just picked a random product. I just saw this one from Say and I was like, oh, okay, that one looks good. And this is where it gets really cool because this is where you see the breakdown of how Paula's Choice rates the different ingredients. That's that handy little pie chart that you can see. And then you scroll further and you get information on each ingredient. So you can quickly find benefits and functions and an at a glance breakdown. And if that's not enough for you, you can dive deeper. You click the read more button and then that's where you see even more information. So of course, the brand is going to want to try to make some money off of this new text. So at the bottom of the page, you can see a product from their line that includes this ingredient if it's available. But then they also have the scientific article references for the facts that they provide to you. You can also sort ingredients by specific benefits like anti-aging, or you can sort by functions like antioxidants or cleansing agents or coloring agents. And I do have another website that I use called Enki Decoder that is very similar to this one, but I feel like this is a contender for beating out Enki Decoder. I think that's going to be a nice secondary one because the big problem I'm seeing with this that is actually better over on Enki Decoder is when Polish Choice doesn't have an ingredient in their database, it's hard to see that that ingredient was not found. You have to kind of sift through the list to find that it wasn't found and it's kind of in smaller print where on Enki Decoder, it's prominently displayed which ingredients were not found. And the problem with that is that when you're looking at a complete ingredient list, some of the hero ingredients that they say do the things the brand says, you know, this is what my product does and these are the ingredients, those may be the ingredients that weren't found. So you're not necessarily getting a full picture of the ingredient deck if they're not prominently saying which ones aren't there so that you can search for those on your own. It is a brand new website and I know that they're going to make tweaks along the way. So that's just one thing, just one gripe I have so far about the website, but overall it looks super cool and I would highly recommend checking it out if you're looking to get more into understanding the ingredients within your beauty products and whether they are something that you want to use or not. Last week we talked about Crave Beauty by Leah Yu and how she was doing a campaign for for her brand to encourage and help and financially support influencers who want to focus on sustainability. So many of you were telling me about Hannah Louise Poston, who I am very, very familiar with and so glad that she does so well in that space. And a lot of you were talking about how this was a unique way of maybe getting their products in front of eyes, that this isn't just an altruistic thing, that of course Crave Beauty wants to sell products and then and how does that conflict with, you know, creating more waste? And then, you know, it, it was a it was a very interesting conversation. So I'm curious what you're going to think about this next marketing campaign that is happening right now from Glow Recipe. And their whole thing is that they are going to be looking for people to promote their products, but they're not necessarily looking for influencers. They don't care what you look like. And that is literally, they are searching for people specifically and not knowing what they look like on purpose. They did say that even though they're not going to know what people look like, their casting team is going to be asking about certain factors about who you are to make sure that the people that they cast are nice and diverse. Lots of different types of people, which I think is pretty cool. They're looking to cast 10 models in a new campaign for their Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. On the casting call page, it says, quote, we believe that true beauty comes from within, which is why we're launching our first ever anonymous casting. We'll be choosing passionate Dewdrops fans from our community entirely based on their personality and inner beauty. That's right, we won't see what you look like to star in a new Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dewdrops campaign. So this is how it goes. Between May 17th and May 23rd, Glow Recipe will schedule an off-camera call to get to know you and chat a little bit. And then on the 29th, 
9th, the finalists are going to be contacted through a camera Zoom call to let them know that they have been selected as a finalist. On June 5th through 7th, the finalists will travel to New York for a photo and video shoot. Their FAQ section on their page states that in addition to covering travel and lodging for New York metro area talent, we will be compensating each participating model for their time in the one day photo and video shoot. So if you're interested in applying, it is open now. You can apply on their website, but you need to act pretty quickly because the applications close on May 3rd. According to the terms and conditions, you have to be 18 years old and a U.S. resident. So if you decide to apply, let me know. I would love to know how the process goes for you. I'm really excited to see who they pick. I think it's pretty cool. All right, my friend, we are moving on to the product report to talk about the things that were released this week. Lots of interesting things to share with you. Let us start with what is on my face today, the ColourPop Lav-ish collection. I will show you all of the products in action in PR Purchase Product of the Week right after the product report, but just a quick summary. There's the Lav-ish Pressed Powder Palette, two So Glassy Lip Glosses, three Super Shock Shadows, and a Super Shock Tie-Dye Highlighter. The full collection is $58, and individual prices range from $7 to $14, and of course, as ColourPop does, there are bundles that are smaller than the full collection. Now, this is very interesting. We have the Tarte Shape Tape Radio Radiant Concealer. It is $31. They say it is a medium coverage, which is very different for Tarte. They are very, very full coverage with their concealers. It is a radiant concealer that's feather light and bright, so it won't hide your freckles or cake your face. I counted the shades. I counted 37, but for some reason, I feel like I counted wrong. There are 37 in a row, but it's multiple rows. And I do kind of love that they're moving away from the super heavy, thick concealers that we know Tarte for. I think it's very trendy to to do something a little lighter coverage. People were losing their minds online about the second collaboration between Glam Light and Scooby-Doo. It is, I think it just launched this morning. Very exciting. Prices range from $10 to $36 per product. There's the Scooby-Doo palette. There's 25 shades in the palette. There's five different rows. And then each row is dedicated to the color story that goes along with a specific character, which I think is super cool. Have not seen that personally since the Urban Decay Alice in Wonderland palette that I absolutely love. They had one row for each character, so I think that's really cool that they're doing that. There's also the Daphne and Velma blush duo, the Scooby-Doo and Shaggy lip scrub and mask duo, the Scooby-Doo mirror, and the Daphne or Velma lip kits with either a pink color story or an orange color story. There's an iridescent glitter lip gloss and a matte lipstick. But you know what's so weird is the more I've been doing What's Up in Makeup in 2023, I've noticed way less eyeshadow palettes than we used to see. We're seeing a lot more cheek products and lip products. And this next one is no different. We have the Huda Beauty Lip Blushes. So they're taking a step further by putting a lip stain and a blush together in one product. They're coming on May 9th and there's five shades available. On their Instagram post, they say, introducing our new lip blush, lip and cheek stain. This lip stain is unlike any other stain I've ever tried. The formula is hydrating, so comfy and stays on all day. Very much looking forward to reviews of this. It looks like a very interesting product. Uh, Huda usually puts out pretty good products, so I would imagine this is going to be pretty good. I'm sitting here thinking, though, logistically, that if you're using it as a blush, you're going to have to blend pretty quickly because that stain is going to, like, just stay in one place. That would kind of be my only concern about a product like this. And I had completely forgot about the MAC Underground program. It actually launched back in the summer of 2020 where they had, like, a, a multi-chrome looking a skin finish and it sold out in like an hour and then I haven't really heard much since then I might have just missed it they probably had launches and I just missed it but now they just came out with another one and it is their MAC Stack Mascaras in three different color choices, colored mascaras. So there is a violet, a cobalt, and one called Squirt, which is a bright green. Now these did not sell out within an hour, but two of them when I started filming were sold out. That's the violet and the cobalt. The green was still available if you're interested. They're $28. Now moving over to Sephora, I get this question a lot and it's about sunscreen use because you know I'm 
a big proponent of sunscreen use, especially if you're going to be out in the summer sun. So a lot of people ask me, how do you reapply sunscreen over top of makeup? And this is one way that you can do it. I'm not sure about this particular product though. Let's talk about it. This is the Super Goop Glow Setting 100% Mineral Powder SPF 35. It is $35. Along with the sunscreen ingredients that are in here, there's also silica and silica is a great oil absorber. So if that's you, that you have oily skin, this may help with some of that oil absorption. But then the thing that makes me like, mm, I'm not sure about this, is they say it has a sparkly glowing finish. And I don't know if I like the idea of my entire face sparkling. Like, is this like a shimmer or is it really a sparkle? Because if it's just a little bit of a glow, that's one thing. But the word sparkly makes me boop, boop, boop. Like, that sounds like I'm backing up. That's not what I intended. That was my red fla flag sound, but it just didn't come out right. Anyway, red flags is my point. It just seems like that might not be something I want all over my face, that maybe the matte one would be better for this. But either way, powder products like this are a great way to reapply sunscreen throughout the day. Moving on from that, we have a new product from Beauty Blender. This is the Boost Firming and Makeup Setting Spray, $33 there. They say it is a multitasking setting spray to set makeup for up to 18 hours, visibly plump skin and blur pores and reduce shine. So I decided to use the Paula's Choice little like uh, the ingredient thing for this product to see what popped up with it. And it was, it was quite interesting. So there is a film forming ingredient, which is probably what's going to help make your makeup last longer. And beyond that, there's a lot of humectants in there to pull water into the skin. Now, if you have dehydrated skin, that is going to give you a temporary plumping effect. I didn't really see much in here as far as blurring pores or reducing shine, but I might just be missing it. Like I said, this ingredient database thing isn't perfect, uh, but I didn't see anything for that. So if you're looking for like the being able to make your makeup last longer and then maybe a little bit of oil absorbing, maybe a little bit of skin plumping, this may be a product you want to look into. And then over at House Labs, I know some people are going to be very excited about this. They have the La Monster Lip Crayon Vegan Lipstick and Lip Liner. There are four new natural shades. There's a lot, there's some that look a little more natural over there, but a lot of them are super bold. So it's nice that they're coming out with more like neutrally natural shades. And those are $22 each. Staying with Sephora for just one more product. This product is coming soon. It is the NARS Afterglow Liquid Blush. Everybody's coming out with the liquid blushes right now. Very, very trendy. Available exclusively in the app on May 15th and all other customers will have access on May 16th. There are six shades available. They say it is a lightweight skincare infused liquid blush that delivers a buildable rush of color with eight hour hydration. I'm honestly not surprised NARS is going this route. They are known for their blushes. They're able to capitalize on some of those familiar names like Orgasm and Dolce Vita and, you know, they have them all there. So very smart for them to go there. I feel like they came out with a liquid blush before, but this seems to be really focused on the glowy blush, where I feel like the liquid blushes before weren't about that. And the other thing is they seem to be capitalizing on the skincare infused, which we talked about in December and January that that was going to be a big theme for the year. It is really flowing out there, the skincare infused makeup. But just my personal opinion on all this skincare infused makeup, I feel like honestly, the best skincare is the one that you put on your bare face or over top of other skincare products, not one infused in your makeup. I don't trust skincare infused makeup to be 100% with you because if I put on a very occlusive foundation, it may be harder for some of the products to get past that to seep into my skin. I would much rather do a skincare routine and then put my makeup on, especially like a nighttime skincare routine. I, you know, if it does something great bonus, but I am not buying makeup for skincare benefits. That's just my personal choice. You do what you want. But if that's all that's calling you to this makeup is that it's skincare infused, that I, I personally would advise against doing that or just getting it for that. And then Ulta was super boring this week. <laughs> There was just two products from Natasha Denona, which were really just one product. It's the High Glam Concealer, 50 shades, huge, ginormous shade range here. $30 each. They say it is a new full performance formula with advanced skincare properties. I threw this one through the Polish Choice ingredient thing too. This was actually the first one that I put through there. And the ingredients that they tout, the two of them that they tout are actually not in the database as they're written on the ingredient list. There is a grape extract, uh, which is a great antioxidant. We all know grape seed oil and all that great antioxidants. And then this one surprised me. This is the capsicum anum extract. That's a sweet chili pepper. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, why is that in a freaking concealer? I have no idea. So I'm wondering, is this a tingly concealer? Is that what's happening here? I did look a little bit more up about this pepper and it doesn't have to be a spicy pepper. So it's possible it won't have any kind of tingling, but uh, Natasha Nonona does say that it activates skin's microcirculation system to reduce puffiness, targets the production of skin pigments that lead to dark circles, and boosts collagen renewal for firm, firmer skin. So it sounds like it's doing something in that area, but I don't know. I have never seen this ingredient in a concealer before. Super, super weird. Very curious to see if it actually works. And then the other one, they're just marketing a few shades of this as color correcting. So it's the Natasha Denona High Glam Color Correcting Concealer. Six shades there, again, 30 bucks, looks exactly the same. It's just their marketing is color correcting. All right, PR, purchase product of the week. Let's do just a quick run through of this ColourPop collection. This is the Lav-ish palette. I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch these for you real quick. I have not used this yet. Ooh, that's real, real chunky there. ColourPop's coming out with a lot of these real chunky shades that are a little bit harder to blend. I don't know what's up with that. Not so good so far. Can't even see where I swatched it before. Wow. This is, this is the least impressive ColourPop palette I think I have ever seen. Oh my gosh. These better look good. Like what is even happening here? What even is this? ColourPop, what is happening? What is going on? Let me double swatch them because maybe we can help them. <laughs> this is so bad. What is happening? Mm, helping a little, not so much. I mean, some people like really light looks. Some people like really light shades. So if that's you, then maybe. But if you're looking for like pigmentation, this is, this is really. All right, this is the double swatch. Mm. Kind of like this guy. This guy's cool. He's got a nice little duochrome shift there. Mm. I know purples are not notoriously not so great to work with, like that they're really hard to develop as a brand, but I don't know about that. That doesn't look so good. All I used on my eyes today was I used a little bit of this shade and honestly it didn't show up very much. So I had to reach into the Alice palette because it's a similar color story. And I ended up using these guys in my look instead of this palette because it wasn't really showing up and I was wondering why. On my lids, I actually used the Super Shocks. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these for you real quick. I'm gonna double swatch them. On their ad for these, it looked like they were duochromes, but on the eyes, honestly, I didn't really see that. I don't think that one needs a double swatch, but we'll do it anyway, just so we have the same thing for all three shades. Oh, that one doesn't need a double swatch. That one, that one I had a great experience with today. So we have So Surreal, Social BB, and Angelic. And that's what they look like in actuality. Using these today as a first impression, I honestly really didn't like this shade at all because I don't like my shadows to have a black base. I like them to be the true color that I see in the pan. And to me, this is going to be a deep purple when really it was a black with a little bit of purple shimmer to it. It's what it's on the outer corner of my eye. And look, it's already like going up. Look, I've got like some space there in my crease. That's not cute. <gasps> I don't like that at all. Ugh. I use the KV primer today which maybe that might have had something to do with why it looks like doo-doo right now super shocks don't usually do that as far as like the little space there honestly this shade is money this one is fabulous this is the shade angelic very very easy to go on really enjoyed using this we'll definitely be using this in the future but these two shades the social bb and the so surreal not super impressed and the way that it's wearing just being on my eyes for the past you know hour or so it's not super cute, not dig it on these very much, just from first impression. Now the highlighter, really like this in my inner corner, but not liking it on the cheeks. I have it on my cheeks today, and it's just a glitter bomb. It's just a, a flat, chunky glitter bomb. It feels like a super shock in the pan, but when you put it on your cheeks, it's just glittery. Maybe it was the brush that I used. Now looking at that swatch, I think it might've been the brush that I used that made it so chunky. Look, it looks like just like a stripe. It doesn't look cute. That might've just been my application. I'm not gonna count this one out. I'm gonna keep playing with this because when I really got my finger in there and not the fan brush that I used, I feel like it did a little bit better and that maybe, let me actually, let's just do it real quick. Let's see if I can just like put it, there you go. If you like purple blushes, 
That is way prettier than the way that I had put it on before. Yes. Okay. I'm backing it up. I'm backing it up. I think it was just the brush that I used. That actually looks pretty cute. Now I have to put the other side to match because it was just, it was just real chunky looking with the brush. That looks so much freaking better. So much better. But if you don't dig on purple blushes, you want to pass on that. Let's watch these lip glosses real, real quick. I'm just going to put it right here. Oh my gosh, they look almost exactly the same. Man, this is not a good collection from ColourPop. I, have, I don't think I've ever said that, ever. This is not a good one. So on the top, I have Purple Aura and then I have Cyberspace. Well, yes, it's here. So that's Purple Aura and that's Cyberspace. Like what is even happening? How are, how, I mean, they're slightly different if you really look in the swatch, but on the lips, those are gonna look exactly the freaking same. I put one of the lip glosses, I forget which one, over top of a lipstick. This is the Stay Put Liquid Lip by Milani. I have no idea how good these are yet. I'll keep you posted on that, but I put one of these over top and it just kind of mushed into it. Didn't really do anything to the color of the lipstick. So yeah, super disappointed in this collection. I'm a big purple lover, love me some purple, and this is just really falling flat, not a fan. Not a fan at all. Notable sales this week, just a few for you. We have the Kosas packaging change sale. They are not gonna be black and white packaging anymore. They're gonna be doing something else. So anything in that black and white packaging is on sale for 50% off. Then we still have going on the Viseart 40% off sale. That is their spring sale still going on. And then Bare Minerals has 25% off site-wide. And that my friend was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you as always to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you oh so very much. Be in my safety net, making sure I don't miss anything important. You all are awesome. Our chat today is going to be at Mm, 10 a.m. Um, <laughs> I got confused for a second. 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to be hanging out talking about makeup. Hopefully you can join us. If you can't, it's so easy to find on the replay. If you're subscribed, all you got to do is go to your subscription feed. Should be right there for you. Very, very easy. But if you're not subscribed, you can also find it by going over to my channel page, clicking on my live tab, and that's where all my live streams are housed. Or below this video, I do have the What's Up and Makeup live podcast playlist, and that video will be added to that once it has rendered and gone live and we're done chatting. It'll be there for you. So you can listen to What's Up and Makeup as a podcast. You can watch it however you like to enjoy it. I always try to make sure that whatever information I give you, I give it to you verbally so that you don't have to be looking at the screen in order to enjoy live chat. So hopefully you'll listen today because I think it's going to be a good one. Thank you so so much again for watching. If you would like to hang out a little longer, you're not ready to go, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Been Makeup. Should be right down there for you, and YouTube's gonna pick the top one based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Totally get it, you got stuff to do. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did, and mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.